the Tablets Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today we're looking at these, which is our take on fantastic bookmarks. Um, we've come up with various different ideas, and today I'm going to show you how to make these. So the first thing we've done, we've got a couple of different ideas of how to do this. Um, the first idea was to try and keep it in a kind of squarish shape by using these fibre paper um, dams, for want of a better word. So I'm literally going to just use a bit of gel glue along the edge of the dams like that to glue it in place. And then effectively I want to fill this up with glass. Um, to put it in. Now I want to keep the glass quite thin because I don't want it um, too thick. These are our new mandalas. We're going to sell out them within like three seconds, but we will carry on. They'll be slightly different every time we pull them, but we'll get those in. I'm using stuff out of our candy mix scrap. Um, I'm going to leave quite a lot of space between because we're, we're going to squash quite flat. And then I might put some um, little bit of frit in between to help it all join together. So the top area I kind of want less interesting than the bottom because then I'm going to tack these elements at the top um, after we've squashed, squashed it, pressed the glass, however you want to say it. Um, then we'll have some other elements up there. So I'm sort of filling that up and then I'm going to put some backfill, some um, marini in between. I'm going to fill a couple more like that. Then I've got another idea, which is just to have some a very simple kind of um, free form, um, where I'm just going to put a load of glass together and effectively let it all get squashed together, and it's going to be in a kind of free form pattern um, that I don't really mind about how it looks. And it will be an organic shape. So I'm going to do a shape like, like that in a free form and do a, a couple like that. So I'm going to fill these up and then you can kind of see what I mean when they're, they're um, in there, you know, ready to go in the kiln. And then we can have a look at them when they're ready to go in the kiln and be pressed. So this is what I've done. Um, just to run through them, we've got three with the little fibre paper dams. I think I probably overfilled definitely this one, probably this one. This one should be all right, so I'm not sure the fibre paper dam will hold. Um, we'll have a look. It's good for you guys to see as much as me how much glass you need to put in. These, um, these three are more free-form ones. I've done this with some kind of scrappy sunflowers that were a bit um, bent out of shape. Um, so I put those in with some just green frit some stringers and some other um, hollow roses I had. And then this is doing it slightly differently. This is a two mil piece of glass just with some um, different scrap marini on top. And then I've done these two, which are just some of our mandala. These are the older mandala and this is the newer mandala. This, um, and just putting some white scrap marini around them and we'll just um, press them all together. So I will then take, I'm not gonna do it now because I wanna do it when it's in the kiln. Um, I will take this kiln shelf and put it directly on top with the wa freshly washed side on the glass and take it up to the firing schedule that will be at the end of the, um, end of the video. Um, and I don't put any spacers. And so I know some people, if you want to keep your glass a certain thickness, let's say three mil thick, you can put like stainless steel washers or some other kiln furniture in there to make sure the kiln doesn't go any... Um, any uh, flatter than, the glass isn't any flatter than necessary, um, but I don't. I want mine to go really wafer thin because these are bookmarks. I want them very light. I'm probably going to cold work them a bit afterwards to sort of, um, you know, to make them the size I want, but, um, you know, I want them as flat as possible, so I'm not going to put any spaces in to stop the shelf going as flat as possible. So this will go in the kiln and we can see how it is when it comes out. So here are they after they've been pressed. Um, I pressed some Marini um, as well, using up the extra space. Um, I just want to show them before I move them at all. You can see that this one didn't really work at all. It's um, There wasn't enough glass to press it all together. 
Um, this one's overspilled the edge of the shape, but I can grind that back. Um, that one's nearly filled the shape and gone over slightly. And then these are pressed. This one's kept within the shape. So I'll get them out. Um, I'm going to sandblast them um, to clean them up. Uh, and then we can have a look at them at that stage. So I'm just going to have a little design like that. Really simple. I'm trying to keep all of these pretty simple. Now also you can kind of think which way you want to orientate it. Now I really like this sort of white star at the bottom here. So I'm going to leave that at the bottom and put some things at the top. Like this. Yeah, it's covering up a little bit of this marini. But I don't mind a little bit being covered up. And then I'm just using some white stars, which because there's little white stars in the pressed glass bit, I quite like kind of using some of those in the top bit. Um, this next one I am going to use, I'm very sure we're out of stock of these Marini. Um, these are our Mandela's, but we hope you will have some more in stock soon. Um, I'm just using some of the scrap ones that we had plus some of our vortex reaction. To be the top. Now I'm going to have this hanging over the top a bit and then I'll put some fibre paper to hold that up before I put it in the kiln. Um, this one I'm going to go that way up and I've got some of our flamework flowers. So inspired by Jennifer who does beautiful things. And I saw some squash glass she did and, and decorated with our flamework flowers and thought it was pretty. I'm going to put a little ladybird on and possibly some green leaves as well. So that's really simple. I'll turn this one up. This one I want to use some of this as our water lily flower. I'm um, just going to use a couple of those. And again, some green leaves. Again, slightly hanging over the edge and I can use some um, fibre paper to hold it up. And this one, because I've got the sunflowers, I've got these offcuts of sunflowers here, which are squash so I don't know if I can sell them to you guys but they'll work well in this project. And I'm gonna put a little ladybird hanging out. So I also had an idea with using something with a tack fuse. So I've got this sort of um, shape of a lady that we've cut out on the Taurus saw. Um, I'm just putting this bit of using a very handy post-it note. Um, guys, put masks on if you're using powder. Um, and then just going to put some powder to make her a dress. Now I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm just going to, using one bit of the tweezers, I'm just going to basically do kind of graffiti, um, graffiti into the powders to give the dress some texture. take the post-it note off very carefully 
and she has a very pretty dress. Now I'm going to decorate, oh I'm going to put her on the, the Here now, and I can reclaim those powders, and then I want to decorate her face. Move her down. So I'm just going to put some glue around and slide her up and slide her down so she stays in place. I'm going to use some of her eyes, and yes, they're a bit oversized for this size face, but I'm going to again use some fiber paper to hold them up over the edge and a pair of lips. And I'll give her a, so this will be the bit that will help and stay outside the book. I'm going to give her a funky kind of, we were talking about fascinators at the studio yesterday. I'm learning creation. I was wondering if they had a word for kind of a fascinator. In creation. upside down but hopefully it looks okay. I'm going to put some more on top of each other just to sort of help hold it all together. How can I use the tweezers? Change her expression for me. So there we go. Um, so you know these are now going to go in the kiln. We'll just we'll put some fiber paper underneath the various bits. It can go on and put um, in the kiln on a long slow tack fuse with a nice anneal to look after everything and um, we can see how our cool bookmarks look when they come out. So here they are out of the kiln. I love how these have turned out. I think they're really fun and funky and they're a great idea and I know a bit of glass is maybe a bit delicate for a bookmark but I think it's a fun thing. You know look at this one in here. It works really well um, uh, to kind of keep a page in a book. Um, I particularly you know, like her, I just think she's really fun and um, what's not to love about that? <laughs> Such a great idea. Um, so I just think it's kind of got so many different ideas and applications to do this depending on the person you're making it for. It could be such a personalised gift depending on what they love and, and um, like. We've had a bit of slippage here of this one in the kiln but I kind of don't mind that. It's like a little antennae coming out the top. Um, I really like this idea. I hope you guys do too. Um, in a bit there will be a button so you can subscribe to our YouTube videos. You can also turn on notifications so you know when they come. And there will also be another link so you can subscribe to getting our newsletter, which will show you about new products we're bringing out, any ideas we have, any special offers we have. If you're interested in Marini, definitely su uh, subscribe to that. We always have kind of fantastic ones on special at um, various different times and also other things like free shipping and things like that. So it's worth signing up for our newsletter. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I can't wait to see what you all do and see you next time.